Panasonic GH4 has some photo styles, which is equivalent of picture styles or picture controls on Canon and Nikon. And it is very useful for certain circumstances. Let's take a closer look at it and find out when it's useful and when you may not want to use it. Check this out. First little disclaimer here, I am not a colorist, but I am a guy shooting video, learning, <laughs> trying to learn and trying to make better video and film. So I've picked up the Panasonic GH4 as I'd mentioned in previous episodes, if you haven't been following. And one of the things that was really exciting to me about this camera was despite the fact that it's not a, it's not a raw shooting camera and internally it does not record 10 bit color, but um, you know, kind of one of the things I was looking forward to is potentially getting an external recorder to work with it to capture 10 bit color in the future. Uh, Atomos will have a Ninja, not, sorry, not Ninja, but a Shogun recorder out in a couple of months that should uh, take care of that. So that's one of the things I was excited about, but I wanted to see how things worked just re with the internal recording on the camera in 4K um, to 8-bit. And one of the things that was exciting to me about this camera was that in terms of photo styles, which are on the Canon side, the same as a picture style, or on the Nikon side, same as a picture control, they had this one called Cinema Like D. And the idea with this one is it was sort of a log or flat style. And the idea with these are that when you're shooting something that's really high contrast, you might want to use a log or flat style so that you can capture and retain more detail in the highlights and in the shadows. So here, for example, was a scene shot during the day. This is what it looked like in camera with the settings that I'm showing on screen here. And uh, you can see here that it's very compressed. So our highlights are represented up here and our shadows are down here and it looks very compressed here, very low contrast. So that worked pretty well. I was able to retain all the detail in the highlights here in the clouds. And then this was actually shot midday and all of this was in very deep shadow. You really couldn't make out a lot of this detail with the naked eye. But here, when we're shooting with this Cinema Like D photo style, we get to retain a lot of that. Then the, the Next task <laughs> becomes once you get into post, you have to kind of fine tune it and make it look the way you want it to look. So this Cinema Like D photo style really is for cases where you want to stylize or kind of fine tune the look that you hope to get. And it's not really for a faster, faster workflow where you really just want to kind of capture, not do a lot of color correction or grading, cut your, um, you know, cut that clip in with your overall project and move on. So my uh, my bias, though, of course, um, and I think some of us fall into this trap from time to time, is I thought, well, I'll just always shoot with Cinema Like D with a very flat profile. Then I can do all my grading, get everything exactly how I want it to look, and it'll be really awesome. Well, I'm, I'm finding that's not necessarily what you want to do all the time. So I think for high contrast situations like this, where I'm working on a project where I'm really particular about how I want it to look, that's a great option. So for example, um, what I did here, this is kind of the final look I ended up with for now, but really all this involved was dropping my shadows, so stretching that contrast back out a little bit. And then once I did that, I just bumped the saturation up to get it back to where it was again, because when I captured this in camera, I used the Cinema Like D profile, I dropped the saturation all the way down so I could kind of fine tune where that came back in post. So that works great for those kind of scenarios. However, the thing of the type of shooting that I do the very most is actually kind of corporate headshot and interview style. And, um, you know, in those cases, here's, here is a headshot ca captured with Cinema Like D with those same settings, actually not as aggressive on those settings. In this case, I didn't use the highlight shadow settings, or sorry, on the highlight shadow, I did use lower contrast, but I did not use the pedestal. Um, set at 15. I just left the pedestal where it was. And also in the photo style for Cinema Like D, I only dropped the contrast two instead of five. So not quite as flat. Um, in this case, though, I was finding that the Cinema Like D was doing some funny, what seemed like funny things to the skin tone. So for example, here, if I just approach it the same way that I did um, with the scene I just showed you. Yeah, we have a note here. So I'll just show you here. So if I, you know, crush the blacks because I want to... Um, have a very pure black background here, infinite, infinite black background, as you, if you will. And then I want to pull my gamma up here because I want uh, those midtones a little closer to there. But you notice as I do that, well, it's still really low contrast. And if I push the gain up, 
it doesn't look right. Definitely something's not looking right. So I realized, okay, this is really kind of probably the wrong approach to grading um, log style footage. So let's go ahead and get rid of this node. I really kind of messed that up. So let's pull that off. And here's what I ended up with instead. Let's zoom back in here. So it definitely brought some contrast back. And really the secret is, is not just using the lift gamma gain, but I also needed to use this contrast control here. So I actually dialed in quite a bit of contrast. Uh, it starts at 1.0 and I've dialed it up to 1.32. And then the interesting thing is from there, let's just drop this back to where it normally is. When I did that, you can see the skin tones look really kind of weird. Um, very reddish and not, not where I was hoping to have them at all. So that's really where this pivot comes in. And the way pivot works, actually, let me just go back on contrast here, back to zero, so or back to one. That's the starting point. So what happens when you increase the contrast, if you watch the parade scope over here, is that it stretches your footage. So it pull, it pushes the gain up and it drops the lift. So if you go far enough, um, that's great. You add the contrast back, but it does starts to do funny things with color. Now, partly that's because we're working with 8-bit footage, but partly because it's also, you're not really controlling. It's just from the center point, it's pushing the gain up and dropping the lift. So really what you want to do is use this pivot control, and that lets you choose the point from which it stretches the contrast. Now, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense in you know, if you're just talking about it, but if you start to play with it, you can see what I mean here. And if you watch the parade scope, if I move the pivot up, it's stretching from a higher point. If I move the pivot down, it's stretching it from a lower point. So there's a super helpful thing there that I wasn't, you know, wasn't really clear in my mind. And again, it's because I'm not, I'm not a trained colorist. Um, but it really lets me kind of fine tune where things go and I can control um, the final look that I want. You can see here now the colors are starting to look a little bit more natural, a little bit stylized, but a little bit more natural. And uh, that's actually a pretty good look. Now, to be honest, I probably won't use Cinema Like D in a really kind of flat or log style photo style when I'm shooting situations where I'm controlling the lighting um, and I want a pretty naturalistic look. I'll probably go with something more like this. This is the natural photo style. And, uh, you know, I still have all the latitude I want to kind of tweak things, but I won't have to, to work necessarily as hard at getting it where I want it. And so it's a, probably a quicker workflow. So anyway, that's, that's kind of the approach I'm planning to take there and some things I've learned in terms of that, the contrast and pivot. Contrast and pivot, really super helpful if you are shooting with a flat picture style or photo style and uh, you want to dial in the look that you're going for. So hope that was helpful for you. Again, not uh, this is not like a tutorial where I'm disseminating to the world all this amazing knowledge, but really kind of my experience and what, what seems to be working for me as I get to know this camera a little bit better and working in DaVinci Resolve Lite here. So hope that was helpful. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on my experiences as I you know walk down the learning path of how to shoot better video do better lighting and get better sound. Talk with you soon.